Uh, I'm Gabe. Nice to meet all of you. Thank you for having me. Uh, I am an artist, um, but I'm also a collector. Um, how many of you guys collect things out there? Um, so I started collecting things at a very young age. Um, this is uh, from the Natural History Museum. You guys have probably been there before. Um, but this is a collection of animals. These animals are kind of frozen and put on display for you guys to go see. And it, it's interesting to me because it's a collection of life. And so I said I was a collector. What I collect is actually my friends. I collect people. Uh, it might be a little strange to you. Um, but a, a, a couple years ago, I actually started filming my friends. Um, I went to film school, and I had a film background. And I decided that you know, every time I'd have my friends over, I'd start filming them against a black backdrop and collect these kind of funny videos of my friends. And what came out of this was an art piece, a uh, video sculpture piece, um, called Animalia Cordata, which uh, is actually a collection of my friends in jars. Um, and I project my friends into these jars, and this is what it looks like. Um, and then I also added a little sensor uh, into this piece, a proximity sensor, so that as you got close to my friends, they reacted to you in different ways. So uh, some of them would, re would be scared of you, some of them would ask you to get closer, um, basically kind of trapping my friends in the same way that those animals were trapped in the museum. You can see here they're reacting. <laughs> so this is kind of a good intro to the kind of work that I do. I, I combine sculpture with video together to create what I call video sculptures. From here, I really like the idea of making them interactive in some way and allowing people to interact with the art. So like you guys could come to an art show of mine and you wouldn't have to see it behind a, you know, a glass or something like that. You could actually go up and, and approach the art and have it react to you, or in some cases actually touch the art and have it change. This is a piece called Blend. Uh, in which I put this woman in a blender. Um, and it's not a violent piece. Uh, what happens is when you turn on the blender, she actually spins around faster and faster, and you could kind of determine how, how dizzy she gets. So I think there's something really nice about the idea of being able to interact with art, being able to touch art and, and change it in some way. And I also really like the idea of using, <laughs> using sort of these older appliances and mixing them with new digital art, like video. <laughs> I, I did this again with a piece called Tube, which is an old television that I've had for a very long time. This is actually one of my family's TVs. Um, and I filmed some actors, and I thought, what if these characters could kind of emerge from the television itself and walk around on top? This is playing with the old static. I don't even know if there's static on TVs at all anymore, but this used to be when we had analog TVs, this is what you'd have. Uh, you wouldn't have people, but you'd have static on the screens. Um, so I thought, what if these characters could kind of come out? You wouldn't expect this to happen, right? You'd see this in a gallery, and suddenly these characters would come out and walk around on top. But then I also thought of them as sort of human antennas. So maybe when they touch, when they finally touch hands, this could trigger something in the TV, and this is where the interaction sort of came out of this piece, too. So every time the two characters touch, it shuts off the tube of the TV. Um, this, this was interesting to me, but I've never really incorporated myself into a piece before, and I wanted to make a self-portrait. So traditionally, we see self-portraits at the Met Museum or something like that. You know, there are these grand portraitures of people. This is a self-portrait of myself, uh, but it's done in a kind of a different way. It's a time card clock. People use these to punch into work every day, right, if you've probably seen these before. Um, but I start off as a baby in this one. And as you punch the clock, I get older and older each time. So I actually filmed a, a number of different actors. I didn't use myself, obviously. <laughs> I filmed a bunch of different people that sort of looked like me um, as, a, as a kid and then as an adult. And if you punch the clock 100 times over the course of the day, you get to see me age. And there's me in my current state. <laughs> And this concept of time kind of plays into my, my work a lot. You know, you saw in the beginning of the work, I was capturing my friends at a certain specific moment in time. But time is really fascinating to me when it comes to video-based work. So a lot of my newer work has to do with time as well. Um, this piece, of course, at the end, the person kind of goes, goes dark, and then it starts over, and the baby comes up again. 
But I was thinking about time and creating a larger work based on time. So I've worked with you know, the blenders from the 1950s, I've worked with these TVs from the 1980s, and I thought, what about making uh, a piece that actually has clocks in it? So I created this piece called For Those Who Wait. This is from the quote, time stands still for those who wait. Uh, but I created a room full of video projected clocks that you could actually crank up and control yourself. And as you cranked up these clocks, they would respond in a different way each time. So there's 12 different possible outcomes for these clocks. Everything from, you know, they, they spin around really fast. Sometimes they shatter. There's a bunch of different outcomes. So again, this is a giant environment created out of video sculptures. And each time the clocks kind of regenerate and they're left there. So you don't have to experience the whole piece. It's up to you if you want to decide to crank through the clocks 12 times to see all the different animations. And this is, of course, sort of a, a reference to Salvador Dali. You guys know that piece with the melting clocks. Um, so I just wanted to share one more piece with you. I said I collect my friends. Well, I'm starting a new piece that's not video right now. Uh, this is a, a more scientific piece. I'm actually working with a bio lab in Brooklyn called GenSpace. And I'm doing a collection of my friend's DNA now. So I'm actually taking spit samples from all my friends, <laughs> taking photos of them together. And then uh, it's kind of based on this idea of collecting blind box toys. Has anybody ever collected some of these toys before? You get these toys, you guys know what some of them are, right? You get them and you don't know what's going to be inside. When you open them up, there's different, different toys. Well, I'm creating a vending machine that sells these toys, except they're not toys. They're, they're selling DNA, human DNA. Uh, so just like your traditional vending machine, except this vending machine is called the DNA vending machine. <laughs> and it actually uh, exists now. <laughs> Just sort of how I collect the samples from my friends. I always take videos of them too, produces a sort of funny portrait. <laughs> art installation. It's not really a practical vending machine necessarily, but it, it does function and people have bought samples of, from the DNA vending machine right now. So it's kind of questioning what is art, right? Is art and science mixed together? A lot of my work has to do with art and science. So I hope today, uh, you know, you, you start to think about collections a little differently. Thanks for having me. <laughs>